All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Pyre. So, uh, we're gonna just continue right where we left off. I don't know where it's gonna throw us, uh, because I straight up just quit the game last time. After besting the Pyre Hearts with ease, you at last return to the wagon with your companions. There's little discussion of the Pyre Hearts who seem to have already swam off wherever the next stars direct directed them. Okay, so we've done all this. So let me just go ahead and skip over all of this good jazz. I We were last at the screen where we were going to figure out where the next ride is. Excuse me, because I have the, the hic hiccups a little bit because I just ate super quick because I wanted to get back to playing this game. So uh, the commentary and the uh, reading of the dialogue might be a little off. Okay, come on. Jesus Christ, I didn't realize how much dialogue there was. We... Alright, seek your, again your destination. Okay, so now we're back to where we were. So let's go ahead and figure out... I did not mean to do that. Uh, okay, this star marks your current location, so we are going up here. Triestria, or Triesta, the Silver Star. The Silver Star burns bright over the fissure lands of Black Basin. All right. A unicorn! I see. Awesome. Still further north, then. Not simply north. This shall prove dis difficult. What, what's the problem? Our destination is beyond the Deathless Tempest. A tempest raging in the Sea of Solas seemingly for all eternity. The storm that arose after the death of the Sea Titan, unfathomed per plurns, never ha has it entirely been subsided. A vessel such as ours has little hope of traversing it intact. Can we go around it? Given our confrontation with the Pyre Hearts, our chances back in worm, uh, in worm held waters would be even worse. Come on, people. It'll be just another day in the downside. Go get yourself some sleep while we still can. Bet you'll feel better in the morning. Her optimism is infectious. Isn't it? You all concur that rest is in order for the sea journey that has been taxing to everyone. Ooh, good lord. Come daybreak, you shall have to find a way to sail past the Deathless Tempest. Alright, let's uh, see who we have to talk to. Alright, Faye. Oh, hi, mister. I'm so happy right now. I'm happy because I was so worried about Mr. Hedwin for a while there, you know? He was so kind to me when we first met him and Miss Jodri uh, Jodriel and Mr. Greentail, uh, and you too. But I just really like him. She sighs. She seems happy to be here. Say, do you, um... She trails off for a moment. Do you think he likes me too? Faye is wondering if Hedwin likes her. Uh... Yeah, let's just encourage her. You should just say to Faye that if she has certain feelings for Hedwin, then she should let him know it is a rare fib rare privilege to be loved. She stares at you a moment. <laughs> then she begins to laugh. Oh, you're so silly, mister. I didn't mean like him like that. That's so embarrassing. Besides, I think that maybe he's a little old, you know? I'm going to cheer him up. That This is a funny story. She bounces off, leaving you to ponder just what uh, what just exactly happened. They gain plus one hope for the next ride. Cool! Uh, okay. I was beginning to wonder when you would return. Uh... Okay, so there's no... There's no characters that we can actually... Oh, I can't ring the bell anymore. I'm just playing around with clicking on stuff. That was probably not what you came to this video for. Uh, let's continue our journey. 24 hours later. Okay. So let's figure out what we're going to do. Tizo seems to be very eager to see the wagon head in this direction. Ruki spotted wreckage in, in the area and believes there could be valuables to find. Uh, okay, so valuables, or we go on Tizo's... Uh, Tizo's direction that he wants to take us. I say we go to the Ragged Rock to see if we can find valuables. 
might as well. The remnants of a shattered fleet do little to raise your confidence of your companions, given that the massive death tempest rages to the north, not far from your position. You ought to be more concerned with that storm than in finding trinkets, green tail. Oh, relax already, Jody, and let me do my job. I don't know. I don't show up when you're out there keeping watch and start telling you all to come often, now do I? You interrupt me in the middle of my work no fewer than four times per day. They go on like this for some time before turning to you investigating the wreckage is going to take time, but you may find something to show for it. Continue searching this wreckage. Yeah, why not? You suggest it may be worthwhile to continue searching through the wreckage after having come this far. Rookie Grid Squad. You, you see it my way, chum. Now let's see what we can get. After an exhaustive search, uh, sorry chum, I think I was just chasing the refraction in the sun or something. There's nothing down here. Jodriel fumes at all this but says nothing. Damn it. Okay. Well, that sucked. Uh, damn it. Alright. What is this? You and your companions look upon the death... Less tempest, the stars demand you sail beyond it, yet the very thought is beyond reason. Then something in the nearby water stirs, and from it springs something familiar. Hold, good ladies and good sirs, this night beseeches you to hear him if you please. What is it now, worm? The rites are ended. We have no further need of you. Oh, but you do, and in turn, this night has further need of you, good lady. Out with it then. Let us be joined. Let this knight join you, please. Can you believe this, Hedwin? Not really, no. Nay, look ye not so, uh, so surprised. Your valor and the rites did stir this poor knight's soul. He swears to you upon this long-lost honor as a knight, uh, as a would-be knight errant of the sea dominion that he shall serve you to the What about your other worm friends back there, the pirate hearts? They are base cowards. This knight can no longer abide such spineless characters, characters having witnessed true glory in the clash upon the Hulk of Wars. Never before have we been trounced so thoroughly. And furthermore, this knight shall aid your passage through the Deathless Tempest. Is it not so that you seek passage to the north? With this knight's aid, you shall achieve your wishes. Sir Gilman continues to persuade you for quite some time. He seems to know a way across, uh, wait across the storm, some sort of long-held secret among worms, exiled to these waters. Jodriel puts the rest of you aside after Hedwin gives her a look. Are you most sure that Sandalwood would, would want this thing along? Most sure. Sandalwood wants someone for each mask, and this one seems about as good as we're going to get. Jodriel glowers back at the worm, who tries his best to look presentable. Edwin is more gracious, he tells Sir Gilman, that if he promises to help you cross the Deathless Tempest, uh, then he can come along for now. This knight is overjoyed, and he hereby swears to see you pass the storm. And he has a heart in his eye. Though first, this knight requires your consent. Give unto this knight your blessing in the name of the Nightwings, and thus he shall go forth. Uh, sure. As you begin to say something in response, Sir Gilman cries out in triumph. Vanishes into the depths, yet through this close encounter with him, we cling to some sense of where he is going and what he intends to do. Sir Gilman is determined to help you cross the Deathless Tempest, help see his mission through. What? Well, what is he gonna do? Alright, well, might as well get ready. Let's do it. What have we got? Anybody? Anything? I hear rain. Determined to prove himself to you in the night, Sir Gilman emerges somewhere in the outer reaches of the sea, the sea of Solis and calls out to you. Master Reader, if you can hear this knight, then he implores you now, lend him your guidance. This knight's objective ought to be not far east of here. Today we shall bring peace to, embroiled, to the embroiled sea. Now, however, that amongst the, this knight's brethren, the actions we, we are about to take are highly forbidden. But they are highly just. Thus, Sir Gilman sends forth to quell the storm that rages to the Traverse the reef. Alright, cool. Uh, okay, so he has a slash move. Alright. Uh, he has a 
W move that consumes half his stamina, and a slither move that allows us, is basically a sprint. So let's go. Uh, okay. What is this? Hark, yonder lie the foul spawn of the unfathomable clerks. Uh, the Sea Titan ones, okay. Boiling seas with their wrath. Exiled worms within these waters long have harbored these abominations, using them to bar passage through the downsized channels for save any save this night's own kind. Be gone now from here, fiends. This night shall finish what the under king wars started. Okay. Uh, alright. Banish the foul. I'm, that's what I'm working on. Uh, pretty cool, though, that I have this little attack. Notice that he doesn't have an aura around him at all, so that's kind of concerning, actually. Or he does, it's just super tiny. Hold it right there, you traitorous slug. How dare you turn your back on this knight to your superior. Superior by rank no longer, for we no longer serve the commonwealth. At last this knight checked, here you hold no sway over this knight. Ah, oh, and what have you done to the spawn? Have you no honor left at all? This knight has done that which required a uh, doing. His honor cannot sink much lower anyhow. He figured this would be an ideal time to free himself of servitude. Why, you dare staunch the Tempest before those Nightwings? Good Sir Deluge. This knight was born to dare. Now come and fight this knight if you so dare as well. Arr, Firehearts, banish him. This is an order. Uh, okay. Banish the Firehearts. Uh, Alright, just gotta be careful not to accidentally get banished here. How did I do that move where I... What now, Sir Deluge? Shall you not face this knight yourself and leave the dirty work onto your charges? Fine, Gilman. You wish to stand against your commander? Then have it your way. Sir Marsh, Lady Seagrass, to me. Banish now this troublemaker. Alright. Uh... Alright, one more. Alright. You are master of this knight no longer, Sir Deluge. Thus scatter our fraternal bonds. This knight would say it was an honor serving you, Sir Deluge, but that would be a uh, bald-faced lie, and yet another stain upon his blackened reputation. Until we meet it again, what you lowly traitor this knight will have your head, Gilman. Alright. Sir Gilman's aura flash fires instantly when you press that, whereas most exiles... Okay. As the day wears on, there is still no sign of the warm night. Your companions grow restless, restless but then. Hail, this knight returns with newfound tales to, to tell and new scars to show for them. Sir Gilman is sopping wet and visibly shaken. He struggles to maintain decorum. He, he is, in short, the very image of, of a warm knight. And more importantly, that little tempest ought to no longer pose a threat for now. Behold, as if, if on cue the deathless tempest begins to simmer and subdue, and there it goes, just like that. Interesting. Well, would you look at that? He really did it. Of course this knight did it. Now, if it would be alright with you, this knight could really use some shut-up. The warm knight then collapses in exhaustion. You and Hedwin help him up. A deal is a deal, Sir, uh, Sir Gilman. Welcome to the night wings. Huzzah! Sir Gilman joined the group. He also revealed a path north for you. Bid him welcome. All right, cool. So we're on to the Deathless Tempest area. Nice. Wait. The wavy parts were over there. We could literally have just gone around it. Okay. Ooh. Deathless Tempest. This place looks very cold. Interesting. Ooh, what is this? <laughs> With Sir Gilman's aid, you managed to breach the Tempest. You were true to your word, Worm. I shall give you that. But now what? We are stranded in this cursed storm. A most excellent question, and from one most favorite. Call me that once once more, and I shall tie you in a knot. Ah, and from one most spirited as well. This knight was wise to side with ye. 
just where do we turn from here? Answer the question now. <laughs> Sir Gilman does no, uh, does no such thing, although eventually he does make note of specific currents that of a specific current that should lead you to the lands beyond. If I may, I can't co corroborate Sir Gilman's account. We are close to making landfall. Then let me be the first to say, let's go. You're on the verge of sailing across the Sea of Solis. Voyage on. Um, say, uh, Tarek? It is. Hi, Ruki, what is it? That loot you're always carrying around. You know how to play that thing, don't you? Why? I suppose I do. Good, because I was thinking it's a little gloomy here and we could use a little tune to lighten up the mood, know what I mean? We do need some music. Aye, then let me tell it, let me see what I can do. Alright. To the black basin. The salt and roiling sea, the moon began to cry. That's an interesting voice. Sorrowful tears and filled the waters high. The misty morning over the brine. Lies a leaden sky. The stars all hide away from the chill nice. until the evening rise. Is that lava or water? I can't tell. Talk of how to best reach your destination. Uh, okay. Let's uh, have a look and see who we can talk to. Alright, let's see what Sir Gilman has for us. <laughs> you approach Sir Gilman, who, who must have just finished practicing his fencing maneuvers. He regards with his single eye. Hail, Master Reader, this knight is determined to train harder, having joined the famous knight. He shall ensure that his triumvirate continues to live up to its most feared reputation. This is such an honor, and this knight has a great deal of honor to regain. Having fled the Pyre Hearts, this knight fully expects to conduct, conduct the rites in a most honorable fashion to the fullest letter of the law described within the books. The triumvirate, triumvirate this knight has met, and perchance mentioned by name, they are inclined to bend the a bit, sometimes a lot, and to prevail by any means they can. But this is wrong. The exile who refuses to obey the rules as they were written by the under under King Ors and his seven friends deserve neither his honor nor his freedom. Thus does thusly does this knight have confidence the master reader shall resist any temptations to conduct the rites in an, uh, any underhanded fashion. Now then, this knight must undergo a thorough cleansing, having trained until the point of foulness, so please excuse him, Master Reader. He slithers off, humming some sort of chivalrous tune. Interesting. Uh, let's ask what's on her mind, Sandra. So then, we are back on solid land, or something like it, huh? Then this must be the Black Basin. Flames and noxious fumes on one side and suffocating forest on the other. Lovely, lovely place. So good of you to take me in, take me here. You truly would pursue those blasted stars until the farthest corners of this land, it seems. Though I had better cease my blasphemy or else these scribes themselves just might descend from up, up on high and strike me with another much deserved penalty. The thrill of such transgressions, reader, sometimes it keeps me going, not that I have any real choice, and now we had best uh, get back to our normal business, as it were. Alright, well, that's cool. Let us do this all again sometime. Alright. So, we can survey our surroundings. You find that Hedwin has asked several volunteers to scout the area and report back. Alright, everyone, don't go too far and let's meet back by dusk. Please use caution. The exiles uh, dwelling in these lands are, well, rather territorial. For your part, you remain with the black wagon to keep watch. You see occasional dark shapes soaring across the sky, but none of them draw near enough for you to see in any detail. Eventually, your companions make their way back, and everyone arrives as planned or early. Hi, everyone. I'm back. I have come back. Faye returns from the east with little to report, save for word that the glowing molten rock there is very, very hot. This knight yet lives, although he has little else to report. 
The newest member of the group, Sir Gilman, returns from the northern pass, visibly shaken. He appears to have discovered an intense fear of heights. Krakaw! Uh, Tizo wonders whether any spe species of fish live in the pools or rocks nearby. The little imp Tizo seems disappointed to have left the water behind. He rem remains with you near the wag wagon. There, there's a western pass that seems traversable. If we travel by the light of dawn, the shadows and crags may well cover our advance against ho whomever may be watching. Begging your pattern, I do not wish to contradict your strategy, madam, though in my experience we shall not remain hidden for long during the climb toward the nest of Trieste. The exiles of the highway remnants, you may know may have no love for them inherently, but they have uh, highway remnants, the last surviving faction of the winged harps, the ancient enemies of the commonwealth. Okay. They are as coarse as feathers, they hold themselves superior, the Arch Justice and Robles the fourth out of the ninth. Have no such quarrel quarrels with me. I ha I may be able to negotiate safe position. <coughs> negotiate with them. The headwind steps in as the lone minstrel bows and black Sir. backs away. Hey, let's not decide on this Get just yet. Coming. We're going anywhere we're not going anywhere right now. That much we can agree on. We'll decide how best to go ahead come morning. For now, let's take the rest of the afternoon and get our bearings. Jodriel glares at the sky as everyone else disappears. You have the rest of the day to practice your vocations. Use your time well. All right, we have our vocations that we have. Uh, I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and mentor our companion. I don't see a reason to do the other ones. All right, let's see. We could mentor you, but actually we probably should since you're relatively new and really could use it. All right, let's do that. This night shall be your eager pro protege. You and Sir Gilman spent some time reviewing the specific aspects of Riot, such as the properties of the aura. You sense he gained something from it. Yay! Huzzah! Great wisdom clouds over this night's entire consciousness. All right, let's see what perks he has available. If Sir Gilman and all his allies are banished, he shall instantly return. After Sir Gilman banishes an adversary, one of his banished allies shall instantly return. That's a good idea. This knight has no idea what the Master Reader said exactly, yet feels smarter nonetheless. All right, cool. So we may just use him on our next uh, mission, but we'll continue our journey. Okay, what do we got here? We have the Black Shore. Highway Cove to get to the nest of Triestria. Jodriel wishes to avoid harps by staying on low ground. The lone minstrel believes he can no negotiate safe passage with the harps via his pass. Ah, uh, let's negotiate. Why not? I'm always good for a hot debate. Let's go. Show yourselves, you frightened little birds. All day long, we get shadows across the sun. You are being watched. Jodriel is very unhappy about it. Though the lone minstrel now attempts to call Perhaps I can communicate with them. Please, believe me, madam, when I say your enmity towards the harps uh, had best be held in check here. A winged race known as the Highway Room. It's okay. Jodriel looks at him with fury in her eyes, and yet he retains his calm demeanor. Soon she grants his request with a silent gesture, and then he calls toward the heavens. Good sisters, we humble travelers such as you, and beg your leave. We journey by the, the sea and seek safe passage through your lands. We shall not disturb your hunting or your nests. The request is met with nothing but silence. You search in vain for any indication of acknowledgement. <clears throat> then, without notice, one of them appears. She swoops up the minstrel up and out of sight before John Riel to respond. Damnation! Wait here, I shall go find him. For a long, terrible moment, you are alone with your panic. Soon, however, the lone minstrel returns amid the sounding of flapping weeks. He he dusts his cloak and calls out toward him. We thank you for your hospitality, good sisters. We shall be on our way. Having seen this, Jodriel returns sullen. The exiles of the highwaymen are letting you pass for now. It seems they are having some dispute within their ranks and wish no further troubles for their time. It is a warning, one that leaves Jodriel fuming. Jodriel lost, lost minus for hope? Okay, well, we're not using her on the next, right? Yep, definitely not using her at all. And there's the unicorn, though. We made it. Lovely. At last you arrive at the nest of Trieste, Trieste where the next rite is to soon commence. You cannot shake the 
feeling that unseen eyes watched your wagon ascent, wagons ascent, and remain watching now. Page revealed. Hunts for murder. All right, well, let's go check out that page. Ooh, what's this? Oh, okay, so that's Sir Gilman's crest. Uh, all right. Um, could we summon Sandra? What do you got for us? Nothing? Okay. Sucks that I can't really use... I can't train with you on anybody. Interact to browse revealed pages. All right, this is the newest revealed page, so let's inspect it. The hunt for Myrrh. My emperor lay there, bleeding and alone, stranded for a bitter land beyond the river. With fleeting consciousness, he understood the folly of his quest and the folly of his rule over his country. Thus he did await the last embrace. It was the imp Harub that nursed him back to health and warned him often of the dangers he would have to face. Many enemies of Mur would come and search for him, some under employment of the, the rope collar, some longing openly for cold, complicated vengeance. I was one of them. I plunged into the river unwillingly. We need needed to be sure that he was dead. Okay. Uh, all right, I guess we're gonna keep going. Let's check our shop here. Oh, hey, you guys, what brings you way out here? No, wait, don't tell me. I don't want to know. All I want is you to get the best deals in the downside. Ooh, more items. And yet we still have no more coin. Uh, we do have more of these. Let's see what we got. Any adversaries banished by the bearer takes longer to return by one second. After dousing the adversary's pyre, the bearer's pyre is restored up to five. Uh, that's nice, but I'd rather take these to buff the ones I already have. Yeah, yeah. alright, cool. Uh, so let's go check out who we got here. Uh, I should probably focus on upgrading the other characters' items. Ah, yes, you. Grants the bearer plus three quickness. This is a very important one that we need to buff, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Plus four quickness. Love it, alright. Oh, you guys are my favorite customers, you know? Okay, cool. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're going to have time within this episode to start the right. So uh, what I'll do is we'll go ahead and call it an episode here. We did get some interesting stuff. We actually got a new character, Sir Gilman. So uh, that's actually, I guess, a good place to leave off this episode. Uh, like I said, uh, please leave a like and subscribe. If you are enjoying this series, I say that at the end of every episode, I just wanted to emphasize that truly at this point, because it really does help me out, keep me motivated to keep doing this and whatnot. Uh, until I have, uh, until I'm able, I'm going to keep doing the series on YouTube as long as it takes, uh, until I don't, I can't do it anymore. Uh, and I hope that eventually we grow to the point where I can do this as long as possible for you guys but that's a story for another day uh until the next episode everybody i'm brian this has been another episode of brian plays and thank you for watching i'll catch you on the next episode everybody later